We've got trucks here at the Australian War Memorial, but I, <laughs> I don't know. It's Graham Little, nay Peter Pope. Peter Little, social media, Australian lawyer, admitted to practice. Queen Court of Victoria, 2nd of uh, April 1979, natural health politics advocate. A past track cyclist, but he's not uh, not competing this year. There we go. We're waiting for Hoodie. Graham Hood is going to be coming soon, and then we'll be very quiet and very respectful at the Australian War Memorial because as uh, many people have served for Australia, including my father, Ian Little, passed away at 95 four years ago. Uh, on the same day that I uh, acted for Little Chase Walker Stephen up in Brisbane uh, Magistrates Court or Beanley Magistrates Court and didn't get to see my pa father pass away. But he's got lots of medals from the Second World War. I'd be proud to wear them if I could track them down. <laughs> my sister might lend them to me, I don't know. But uh, it's uh, massive. It's massive the number of people that have given their lives. It's massive the number of people that have actually uh, fought in these wars and they're still going as, as young men have been sent over the Middle East and Afghanistan and all these other hot spots and Syria. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very peaceful, respectful, very short, I believe, about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll be heading to the National Press Club or the Australian Press Club, where ScoMo's giving yet another press conference of what he's up to with his little uh, satanic pedophile mates, and uh, uh, some of them are probably okay, but uh, we know that this is a massive suppression of pedophilia going on. Um, there's a lot of people wanted over and done with. We're sick of the child trafficking going on. We're sick of the child protection stealing children and all these beautiful men and women who fought for Australia. Uh, they'd be absolutely horrified what's happening here. And uh, we all know what happened to Shauna Remembers down in Melbourne with the rubber bullets, don't we, Coach? Maddie Blake watching and Samantha. Here we go. So we'll go over here and have a bit of a chat. So this is, uh, this is the more memorial entrance. I think you've got to pay to get in, but not a very nice entrance, is it? I mean, just like just about everything I've seen in Melbourne, it's just construction work everywhere. Construction work everywhere. So where's Hoodie? Where's Hoodie? Hopefully the phones guys will they'll be okay. We've got John Larder there. We've got the brave paramedic. Took on uh, Hassard, that's in there with the, the cap. No sign of hoodie. I might just have a quick look before I talk to anyone. Let's have a quick look at these statues. It's important, important people. I've had their lives commemorated here. There's another important statue. I've got to remind myself when I go back through Gundagai, where we had the tucker box. Uh, and there's another dog here. The dogs are featuring heavily. This is Raz. Can you see that? I, I can hardly see it. I'll just kind of cover it up. And off. Um, Raz, 21 September 2007. Herbie with Sapper, Darren Smith, 2CR, 7th of June 2010. One of our young soldiers, Merlin from 31 August 2007. Andy, 23 November 2007. What is this commemorating? Nova, 23rd of October 2009. Lucky. 4th of July 2011. Wow. What's, uh, oh, it's over there, is it? Yeah. So, are these the dogs that have fought in the war, is it? Amazing. So, the crowd's building here, small group. Small group. John Larder's just, uh, I'll just grab John before he goes. John Larder, the paramedic that did the hazard case. Where's he going? John, what's happening? Oh, we're just going down around to the gravel pit, just um, at the end of uh, Anzac Parade there. Hoodie's waiting for us down there. Hoodie's so. waiting down there, is he? Okay. All right, well, the crowd's going to move off. Let me just finish. Let's just finish. I want to I find out what's happening to these dogs. Ah, working dogs. Working dogs. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but I'll read it out. Working dogs were first used by the... Royal Australian Engineers in 1918. They were British dogs working as messengers in the trenches of France for Australian sappers. 1944, the first Australian dog platoon, RAE, began to use search dogs. The army dogs, human comrades, are known as military working dog handlers. Modern conflicts, explosion detection dogs. Oh my God. Sapper Mark Worthington, three combat engineer regiment. He's explosive. 
detection dog Sparky. So is that, is that him here? So got to go. Pete a little live. I'm trying to get Sinai Walker today. Bring little Chase Walker Stephen up to, uh, here we go. Oh, it's a nice little leisurely procession here. I don't have to rush at all. Um, I'm not getting a shade because this sun is starting to get about 28. So, phone overheats. I put my cap, the Vax cap. That's www. If you're new to Peter Little Live, a lot of people started following me after uh, yesterday. So about a thousand new followers. Uh, that's www.vaxthemovie, V-A-X-E-D, themovie.com. You'll get two amazing movies. So I'm double vax. I've seen both of them. And uh, it basically recites that movie, released 1 April 2016. And in Australia, finally, on the 6th of, see my memory's right, 6th of December at Logan in 2016. And on the 7th of December 2016, 16, the second screening of the Vax movie was at the Marucci door, RSL, run by Alona Lone, and now runs the IMOP party, love to Alona. She's got to come here too. Alona, where are you? Come on, call to arms, all the girls, all the big gun girls that, and mums that were stepping up back then, 2016, 2017, need to come to Canberra. So that's where I met on the second screening of the Vax movie in the foyer. Uh, Sinai Walker and Mark Walker, Stephen, she went live with me in five minutes with little Chase. Two nights later, we did a second live. We got half a million views. It was unbelievable. I better dig that one out. We need Chase. We need Chase. We need Chase. He's now nine years of age. Four years back then, cerebral palsy. Doctored by the medical profession. Clotted his blood in 10 minutes with vitamin K. Didn't get much better for the little Chase. He's hypoxic by 12 hours. He'd never been able to talk, never been able to walk. Fed through the peg. Got minced on day four with two hep B's. Bit of medical negligence at uh, Lady Salento or wherever it was. It was actually not Lady Salento in Brisbane. It was the other one. Um, probably Royal Women's. Four years down the track with 100 seizures a day. Could die on every breath. Stayed at, stayed at the farm. I stayed at the house about three or four times. Did a stack of lives. Just the traumatic life that uh, Mark and and Sinai lead, looking after Chase and two other beautiful daughters. Nevaeh and Summer, haven't seen them for ages. Little Chase are now nine. Anyway, they cleaned him up, <laughs> the seizures, with medical cannabis and natural food. We kept smashing him at being the magistrate's court with Magistrate Douse paying respects to uh, not only First Nation people, because Sinai is part of Aboriginal, so is Chase. Mark's actually Papua New Guinea, so he's got a good little, good little uh, First Nation blood in, in Australia and New Guinea in Little Chase, and I say he's got the greatest voice in the world even though he can't speak, so we need him back on the stage now. Uh, it's important that these mums that have put everything on the line and dads, we need them back in the movement on the front line now. Monday, call to arms. Call to arms, guys, and this is the, this is what I'm going to try and track down. I've just been speaking to Donna Lisa Gray. By the way, with Little Chase, he stopped seizing and was smiling. And then eventually they corrupt New South Wales government, stole him in a police raid at, at uh, Main Street of Newcastle, Church of Ubuntu set up. Been looking after a lot of people with beautiful cannabis products. Love to all the gang, Karen Burge and Paul Burton and others. And anyway, they did a police raid on the 19th of May, live on Facebook. I tell you what, you want to look at that video, terrific. Put a little chase... Uh, Instead of him having a beautiful life with his family, put him in the John, in the John Hunter Children's Hospital. Admitted at 7:25 p.m. on the 19th of May, and I say he exited at 10:06 p.m. because I've got a document that was never put to the uh, courts by the Crown Solicitor's Office or the Aboriginal lawyer representing Chase. Corrupt document. He actually was admit, uh, exited with. The key inspector, Olsen. He threatened me, tried to call him as a witness in the case later, too gutless, and threatened me, he'd come after me. Well, come after me, Senior Inspector Olsen, because I'm coming after you now. I haven't forgotten what happened to little Chase. 60 days in hospital, got butchered with 18 pr practitioners, 18 doctors prescribed 15 medications on that poor little boy. And halfway through, someone 
Why did Chase have a red raw penis? I've said that before. Someone's actually had a crack at him in there. They're a bunch of scumbags, I tell you. So child protection in New South Wales was run by Michael Coots Trotter. Complete criminal, should never have any role in public service, let alone running child protection. Then he got appointed four years, you know, six, two years later, Gladys, the New South Wales Premier, pointing to head up the police, the lawyers, the jails, the candlestick makers, emergency services, and he's married to Tanya Plibersek. So they're completely in bed, guys. You haven't heard this story before. By God, it's just disgusting, this Liberal and Labor Party. Completely in bed together. Five ministers Michael Cooch Trotter reported to, and then he goes home and sleeps with Tanya Plibersek. He probably got separate beds, I don't know. Doesn't make sense to me. And then that absolute mongrel of a New South Wales Premier, Perishay, goes and appoints Michael Keats Trotter to head up the Department of Premier and Cabinet in New South Wales. And he goes home with Tanya Plibersek, who was the number two in the Labor Party. She's still the, the most popular politician they've got, but 73% of the vote in Sydney. Unbelievable. Too gutless to stand when Shorten was uh, dumped and uh, we were going to target Tanya. She used to be the Health Minister also in 2012 in the Gillard government. Anyway, well, let's stand. go and hoodie. You're going to stand this side or that side? Down that side. Thank you. Beautiful. There you go. Sorry. Hang on, Tara. We just flag representing this legend. We love this man. He's done a lot of great things for you. Good on you. Yeah. Peter Little, Graham. Hey. Peter Little on Facebook. <laughs> How are you going? Oh, good Give you a big hug. Yeah. Good on you, mate. I've got to go. You're a brave man. man. You're a brave man. Yeah, we do. Oh, here's a gun. Here's a gun. Here's a gun. Qantas pilot. Put his neck on the line. Gee, I tell you what, we'd want to fly on hoodies. <laughs> you, you won't be. You, you reckon you couldn't get a ticket in the straight open because of the, they, they couldn't sell them really. But you won't get a ticket on hoodies first flight when he comes back. Where are we going to go, guys? <laughs> Where are we going to go when hoodie comes back? I don't know. Why don't we go to the Galapagos Islands? What do you reckon about that idea, guys? The Galapag Galapagos Islands, where all those uh, alleged uh, winning and things are happening. So it's a, again very, very hot here. I don't know. I'll go under the. I'll go under the shade, guys. I'll go under the shade. Just I don't want this to camp crap out halfway through. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Couldn't hear him. Couldn't hear him the other day. I'll just go over here for a little minute, and then I'll race back over when he's talking. So I'm just in a nice little cover here. <clears throat> here he goes. He hasn't got a microphone. <clears throat> he's a pretty smart guy, guys. So the War Memorial is back this way. You can see it over there. So he's not giving him a chance to grandstand. So clever move, clever move from Hoodie. I'd want him in a tight spot in the planes, you know, when something happens. Maybe one of those rain-making control events or nuclear bombs or whatever happened in, to in Tonga. Unbelievable. Here's a big hug here. You've got to look. Here's 